apartheid was coming to an end, like you were sort of seeing, you know, this whole ridiculous concept of apartheid was coming to an end. Um, you know, you were all sort of terrified of what was going to happen. You know, there was a lot of propaganda against the AMC and we've all sort of like told, you know, watch out. And remember at school, we, you know, we had to do patrols around the schools looking for bombs and, and um, you know, you had to sort of like go around looking for terrorists and like you were worried about everything around you. Um, and there was a sort of like real sort of like sense of, like, I need to watch out what's going on. There's this crazy stuff around us. And then, you know, um, yeah, it, it just sort of like made you think about life a bit more, I think. You know, it, it was um, what if a winter course. It was like sort of a winter holiday course. You were there for a week and, the, and they had the actual Graphic Design Institute teaching you how to do graphic design. And there's a whole, about probably 100 people there or so testing it out. And um, I just couldn't agree with any of the um, teachers. You know, some of the lecturers there, I was like, what the hell? I mean, they made us sit there for days, drawing circles and coloring in circles with, with things and like doing things which I thought was like, this is ridiculous. How do you apply this to real life? And, and so I didn't get on with any of the um, lecturers. And eventually when they, when they gave me my um, assessment at the end of that week, they said to me, um, we would suggest that you choose another career. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I worked there for six months and then and I resigned seven times. <laughs> I actually, I literally resigned seven times and the guy was like, please, not this man, not this man. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're in a flux, just can you please stay a bit longer? I was like, cool, but I can't do these rules um, or whatever. And eventually I got to a point where I just couldn't do it. Went to my own and then that was it. I just literally, yeah, do my own thing. So, so that was about late 2000, I think, where I started doing my own thing and then I've never worked for anyone else since then again. But a lot of people don't. And the thing is, like, I mean, I, I don't know how you survive nowadays. How can you possibly survive if you don't accept that change is a standard part of life? And that change, change happens whether you like it or not. I mean, like, you have to be able to sort of, like, accept change, be able to work with change, and actually embrace change because it is the only thing that is constant is change. Yeah, critical. Change is so necessary. I mean, like, if you don't have change in your body, if you don't have change in your diet, you actually, um, in your mindset, in your friends, in your environment, in your season, your body's not going to function properly. Like you need mm -hmm. seasons. You need seasons. Every three months, there's a, a minor change. Every six months, there's a, in, in theory, there's a major change. So for you know, big seasons, warm, cold. And every three months, you've got to get used to these small changes. Every week, there's a change. So it's critical that we don't see consistency as the way to achieve happiness. Mm -hmm. Embracing change and actually sort of being cool about that. Yeah. I thought it would be super healthy, and I wasn't. Mm -hmm. 2009, 2010, I found myself on literally... Um, you know, 14 courses of antibiotics over those two years. I literally lived on antibiotics at one stage, like nonstop. Yes, yes. It was, I wasn't massively overweight, but I was still overweight. And here I am working my ass off. I'm trying to eat better. I'm making like better choices. Like I'll have, you know, I'll have whole wheat bread or I'll have this or that. I mean, like, like we know now for like 50, 60 years, the scientists proved again and again and again that you are fat because of lack of exercise, not the sugar. You know, you had diabetes, you had cancer, you had all kinds of things because of other things, not because mm -hmm. of sugar and bad food and the preservatives and the additives and all the junk. And that's shocking that, I mean, like, you know, we actually sort of, we put our trust in these guys and they, and they carried on sort of like just like spewing out this junk. You know? So um, I decided at one point, let me actually make my whole MasterChef thing all about cooking good food. It had to come from only natural ingredients. I thought, this makes complete sense. I mean, where, where, where does flavor come from? It's got to be natural. And mm. where does that good food come from? It's got to be natural. And then that was my whole thing. And as I built it up there, um, at one point I decided, let me live on my food only for like 21 days. I'm going to on food that I've cooked with no preservatives, no additives, no added sugar, no extra anything, no added junk, no artificial anything. Let me live off that food for 21 days. So it was a lot of vegetables, a lot of roasted vegetables, and things like that. Meats as well. I did that. And... After 21 days, I was off um, my um, antibiotics for the first time in two years. I, I dropped that extra weight. My focus was unbelievable. I could not believe how solid my focus was and how good I actually felt. So I decided, I realized that all diets fail for one reason, because you don't have good food available right now. And I always knew I'd have my own brand at some point. Um, when, when the concept for Fit Chef came across in my head, it was like, this is a natural progression. Like I've now added food into my, um, into my skill list. Um, I can now take all the other things I've learned in life, put them together into one big pile and apply them and, and, and have this like, you know, you've got all these overlapping skills like a Venn diagram and where, where they all overlap. 
food, um, marketing, um, copywriting, event management, um, web development, app development, all those things. Somehow you get this little lucky little hotspot to real food. So Eat Clean was about, um, is the food real? Um, so is it real food? Can I sort of find out where it comes from nature? Can I, can I see the link directly to nature? Um, are there no preservatives, no additives, no man-made chemicals, no added sugars or artificial sugars? Um, is there no extra junk in there whatsoever? And that was the Eat Clean ethos was, your gut is really important. The, the bacteria that live in your gut basins that run your whole body, I mean, the reason you digest and the reason a lot of your body functions work is because of all these bacteria that live in your mouth, on your skin, in any sort of like crevice you've got in your body, there is bacteria that is very, very, very be um, beneficial, a real sort of symbiotic relationship. Now, if your gut bacteria is out, uh, we're seeing links to everything from autism, autoimmune diseases, um, uh, I mean, cancers, migraines. Uh, so yeah, so basically, I mean, those three things, uh, set an immovable deadline, um, you know, make a, fi a financial commitment that's big enough to hurt you, and then basically make a public announcement. And it's very easy to make things happen then, even if you've got no like, strong willpower or, or stability or stickability or things are very complex in your life, generally you're gonna achieve most of those goals because you're forced to.